Hi, I'm Claire and this is my dream landing shelf. 10 books that I wish I could own an extra copy of just to lend to other people to convert them to my wicked bookish ways. This video is in collaboration with three other bookish ladies from my internet and they are Chelsea who is over at The Reading Outlaw here on YouTube, Jin Jenny from Reading The End and Renee from Lady Business and Fangirl Happy Hour. I will leave links to all three of them in the description box below because they are awesome ladies and you should definitely go and check out what is on their dream learning shelves. And now let's get on to the list because there are a lot of books on there. When I was putting it together I was trying to think of what books it was that I would always want to shove into people's hands not necessarily knowing what it is that they like so that I could give them more tailored recommendations, just things that I always, always love. And so I went for things that are in subgenres that are special favourites of mine. First up, because I love a good dose of politics in my books and because this is one of my favourite books of all time, there is The Dispossessed by Ursula K. Le Guin. This is one that I've brought to a bunch of book swaps before that I've tried to foist on a lot of people because I've not seen a book that's quite so much about politics and philosophy in a sci-fi setting and I love it very dearly for that. If you want to know more of my thoughts on it in more detail there is an episode of Sisterhood of the Travelling Paperbacks which is a podcast I do with Kay and Chelsea that is all about this book. I love it very much, I think you should read it if you haven't yet. Next up I've got another extremely political book and that is The Underground Railroad by Colson Whitehead. This is one that I read only very recently and that was extremely impactful, very brutal, beautifully written book about slavery. The basic premise is that the Underground Railroad was an actual railroad under the ground as opposed to a network of people smuggling slaves out of slave states. Of course I'd want to lend this book out to people because it was so massively written and because it was so incredibly impactful and unconscionable to read but so very necessary but to be honest I kind of think this should be mandatory reading. I really hope that it ends up on a bunch of school reading lists in the future. Next up we have something much lighter and fluffier and that is Temeraire by Naomi Novik. This was published in the US as His Majesty's Dragon. It is historical fantasy, another favourite subgenre of mine. This is the Napoleonic Wars with dragons and really can you go wrong with any period of history followed by with dragons. It's about more than just the subgenre though. It's about the fact that I want to be able to gush and coo at Temeraire, the most ridiculous adorable dragon in the world with basically everybody. Also this is the first in a nine book series so it's great for making people alternatively curse you for giving them so many books to buy and thank you for giving them so many wonderful things to read one after the other. Another historical fantasy that I want everyone to read is my new favourite fantasy of manners Sorcerer to the Crown by Zen Cho. I want people to read this book not only because it is a delightful story but also because it brings much needed representation into an often very white genre. The main protagonists in this story are both people of colour and as such they deal with the rather classic story elements of learning to hone your magic and making your fortune in the city and dealing with intrigues within society. They deal with those things completely differently because society won't let them deal with these problems in the same way that every other protagonist you've ever seen in this type of stories would be able to. Something else I want to convert absolutely everybody to is really smart science fiction that imagines futures that don't look exactly like our present time and one of my favourite recent examples of doing that is The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. I love the world building in this book. I love all the different alien races, the discussion of how they live and how they communicate and how they perceive themselves. This breadth and variety of peoples and species and aliens just makes me so 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 happy because the old-fashioned conceit that aliens would 
be little green men that just look like us and talk like us and think like us is incredibly obnoxious and not that interesting. So I want to get everybody excited about the sheer weirdness of the species depicted in The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet and then after I've hooked everybody with The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet I want to make everyone read Ancillary Justice by Anne Leckie. Although really they should read the whole Imperial Ratch trilogy. These books present us with such a beautifully constructed, wonderfully complex world. We are introduced to so many different cultures, each with their own rituals and beliefs and ideologies and all of this we see through the lens of Breck, our main character, who used to be a spaceship with hundreds of ancillary bodies outside of her main body. And then she's reduced to this one body and her experience of that is so momentously alien. It is so incredibly rendered and all through this book there is so much beautiful language nerdery to sink your teeth into. I don't care if you don't think that language is that interesting. I want to make you read this book so that you will come to your senses and see that it is fabulous indeed. Again, with the making people come to their senses, I've heard so many people say that zombies are overdone in the past few years and I disagree most vehemently. What's making it sound like we've had too many is that we've had a lot of the same story. But there are still ways to look at zombies differently and in my opinion when it's done right it is just awesome. And that is why I want everybody to read The Girl with All the Gifts by M. R. Carey, a story about Melanie, a young girl who lives in a military facility and goes to school every day in a classroom in the same building where she lives and she has to be strapped into a wheelchair with a mouth guard and she thinks this is all normal because she's never known anything else. And of course as the story goes on you get to see how the zombie aspect plays into the story but in my opinion it is possibly the best zombie book that there is out there. The ending of this book absolutely blew me away. I'd never seen anything like that before. You should absolutely, absolutely read it and if you can you should also see the movie adaptation of it that came out last year because it was very, very good indeed. Another favourite zombie book of mine is Feed by Mira Grant which starts from the premise that humanity survived the zombie apocalypse. It's been about 15 years and our protagonists are teen bloggers who have never known anything but the hyper secure America in which you have to get tested for the zombie virus before you go into any building and if you're infected you're shot on sight to prevent the spread of the outbreak. Of course I would recommend this book because I really enjoy Mira Grant's storytelling but also I would recommend this book because I want absolutely everybody else in the world to have to live through this oh my god what the crap just happened moment that is towards the end of this book when one very specific thing happens that you don't see coming which will probably make you cry. If like me you read and you consume media at least partly to engage your emotions and to feel things then this would be a good book for you to read. And if not I want you to start reading for that so I'll give you this book. And finally I've got a couple of graphic novels that I think everyone should read because the other day when I received some comic books in the office a colleague said to me ah you read this stuff? and I just wanted to give them a giant pile of graphic novels as homework. On top of this giant pile indubitably I would have Nimona by Noel Stevenson because this is probably my favourite graphic novel at the moment. It is about Nimona, a shapeshifter who appoints herself the sidekick to the supervillain Lord Ballister Blackheart and wants to assist him in making mischief except that it turns out 
Ballister is not all that villainous and the good guys are not all that good. This is a wonderful story. I've talked about how much I love it many times and there is a full episode of Sisterhood of the Travelling Paperbacks on it if you want to listen to it. It looks like it's going to be this light and fluffy story about this girl who likes to turn herself off into a shark and then it turns out to be about so much more than that. It turns out to have a lot to say about putting blind trust in authority, about what makes someone good or bad, about the power of a strong media narrative. And in keeping with the theme of this video, I actually gave a copy of this graphic novel to my niece for her Christmas this past year. So spreading the good word. And finally, another favourite graphic novel of mine is Persepolis by Marjane Satrapi. This is a graphic novel that chronicles the life of young Marjane Satrapi when she lived in Iran with her family before she moved to Germany for school and then later on to France where she now lives. This is an absolutely cracking read. Aside from presenting a fascinating view of Iran as it was when Marjane was young before the revolution and as it was during the revolution as it became more and more dangerous to be outspoken, to be a liberal, to be a feminist. It's also really, really funny. She tells these stories in a very acerbic style that works really well with this stark black and white, thick lines kind of art style that she has going with it and it just works so well. There was a film adaptation of this book about 10 years ago, I think I was at university when it first came out. I would also very much recommend that. Marjane Satrapi was quite involved with the film as I recall and it's very faithful to the graphic novel and really captures the essence of it. So that's it, those were 10 books that I'd want to have extra copies of so I could lend them to people to convert them to these wonderful, weird, science fictional, historical, political things that I love. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments down below if we've got any lending books in common or if you'd have a completely different lending shelf to mine. Don't forget to check the description box below for links to Chelsea's, Renee's and Jenny's dream lending libraries. If you'd like to see more from me, you can check the sidebar right here for more videos. And if you haven't yet, please hit that subscribe button for new videos from me every week. I've been Claire, thanks so much for watching and see you soon.